On today's show, GM Brian McClellan made a pledge to make this team better. How much better are the Capitals now after the draft and the start of free agency? Will this team be competitive in the fall? I'll discuss next on this edition of Locked On Capitals. Your Locked On Capitals, your daily podcast on the Washington Capitals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello and uh, welcome into this edition of Locked On Capitals. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. As always, this podcast is free and available on all the major platforms, including the Sirius XM app and on YouTube. And I want to thank you for making this your first listen each and every day. My name is Dan Holmey. I've covered the Capitals for the last three seasons for Locked On and various other outlets before that. I'm also the host of the weekly show called The Capitals Minute Cast, available wherever you find your podcasts. You can find me on Twitter. It's at DanCaps218. You can find the show on Twitter. It's at LockedOnCaps. And the best way that you can help grow the show is to subscribe to Locked On Capitals on YouTube and comment anything down below. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. So, in this edition of Locked On Capitals, we talk about Brian McClellan's pledge to make this team better. I guess I was a little skeptical about how aggressive he was, uh, how aggressive he was going to be. But I'm going to go ahead and say I think he made some really great moves. I'll talk about that a little bit later. I will talk about what the addition of Jacob Chikrin means for this team. And then in the final segment, Keith Leonard of Rotowire joins me as we talk about the draft. But just to get it going here, talking about the Capitals and how much better are they right now than they were last season. I think a lot better. Am I going to go ahead and etch the Capitals' name on the side of the Stanley Cup right now? No, but I think they're better than they were before. And honestly, that's all you can hope for. You could have gotten super aggressive like the Nashville Predators did, uh, but sometimes that over-aggressiveness doesn't work out. Sometimes there's a lack of chemistry. See what the Vegas Golden Knights did at last at the trade deadline and the moves that they made. And guess what? They got eliminated uh, fairly quickly in the playoffs as well. So sometimes the best laid plans go to waste, as they say. But all things considered, I think Brian McClellan made some really great moves. He bolstered the blue line. He created some holes on the fourth line. He plugged those holes. Uh, The net-minding situation is taken care of. I think the Capitals are in a pretty good position As of right now, there's always outliers like injuries and those kind of things. But GM Brian McClellan committed to implementing significant changes for the Washington Capitals during the 2024 NHL draft in Las Vegas. McClellan indicated that a considerable amount of work was being done, emphasizing the intention to send a clear message to the team and ensure continued competitiveness. Uh, sometimes the media, myself, is are hard on the Capitals, on Brian McClellan, about what are you doing? We made it to the playoffs and we got eliminated in short order. What is going on? I think message sent, message received by Brian McClellan, and I think he made some really great decisions. The overhaul transformed a substantial portion of the team's roster with the acquisitions of such players as Pierre-Luc Dubois, Andrew Mangiapane, Logan Thompson, Jacob Chikrin, Matt Roy, Brandon Duhame, and uh, Tyler Radish, and departing including Darcy Kemper, Beck Malenstein, Nick Jensen, Max Pacioretty, Nicholas Abe Cubell. Um, Some of those players, I guess I'm not really happy that they left, but again, he plugged the holes in their absence. I'm not thrilled that uh, Malenstein is no longer here, but the rest of the players considered Nick Jensen. It was kind of speculated that he was going to be on the move anyway. We needed to bolster the blue line. I think the TVR potentially could get moved at some point uh, as well. Darcy Kemper, he had an offseason, but I think the Capitals and Brian McClellan took care of 
of the situation in net. The additions of Chikrin and Roy have transformed the team's blue line, infusing it with an entirely new identity, while the offensive front and goaltending departments have also seen significant upgrades. Again, I think the Capitals are in a really good position hitting the ground in the fall. Talking about the changes on the blue line. We knew that changes needed to be made, like I talked about in yesterday's show, talking about John Carlson playing 25 to 30 minutes a night. It just wasn't sustainable. McClellan initiated a wave of changes with the acquisition of defenseman Pierre-Luc Dubois in exchange for Darcy Kemper. Uh, subsequently, he brought in Andrew Mangiapane and traded Beck Malenstein. The focus then shifted towards securing assets for the crease, resulting in the acquisition of netminder Logan Thompson to complement Charlie Lindgren. Again, when is it going to be time for Shep Daddy, Hunter Shepard, uh, the mind wobbles. On the opening day of free agency, a significant move revamped the entire defensive lineup with the acquisition of puck-moving defenseman Jacob Chikrin and the signing of Matt Roy to a six-year contract enhancing the blue line with additional shutdown right-hand defensemen. And I, I'm half kidding about the, the goaltending thing. I think the Capitals got Logan Thompson at bargain basement shopping pricing. It was a good move, all things considered. Um, if Hunter Shepard really stands out, I think he could get his opportunity. But when you take a look at Matt Roy, you take a look at Jacob Chikrin, at least on paper, the Capitals are much better. Uh, player acquisitions and departures, the team's fourth line forwards were also replenished with Brandon Duhame and Taylor Radish brought in to replace Malenstein and unrestricted free agent Nicholas Abe Kubel who also relocated to the Buffalo Sabres. So uh, a good chunk of the Capitals' blue line went to the Buffalo Sabres. Hey, I think the Capitals are the better for it. I think they're in a good position. The additions of key players like Pierre-Luc Dubois, Andrew Mangiapane, Jacob Chikrin, Matt Roy, Brandon Duhame, and Taylor Radish appear to have bolstered the team's overall lineup, showing a commitment to remaining competitive and setting a promising trajectory for the future. Some big names. Jacob Chikrin, there were a lot of teams that were vying for his services. Let's not undersell this. That was a huge pickup. There are knocks to his game. You know, I've heard that he likes to get moved all over the place if he's not happy enough with the negativity. We heard the same thing about Pierre-Luc Dubois. As it turns out, Matt Roy said, I played with Pierre-Luc Dubois. I was in the locker room with him. It's just not true. There were some disgruntled players and that kind of thing that tried to spin a story that just wasn't the case. Impacts and outlook. A review of the roster reveals a no Notable surge in potential and upside compared to previous seasons, during which the underdog team clinched a playoff spot. The modifications made by Mac have significantly fortified the team, establishing a promising trajectory for the future and a resolute commitment to remaining competitive. The details and analysis provided give a comprehensive overview of the changes and their potential impact on the team's performance. Again, to put a bow on this, I think that Mac did a good job. I'm going to go ahead and say it. I'm hard on him. I also am going to be the one that says he does something well when he does something well. Could he have done more? Potentially, but all things considered, I think that Mac did a good job. And uh, I think the Capitals are in a good position heading into the fall. And that is what is important. All right. So coming up here after the break, we will talk about Jacob Chikrin. If you are not too familiar with what kind of player he is, I'll discuss straight ahead. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. With killer last minute deals, all in prices and views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. And listen, life is busy. I get that. Sometimes you plan on getting Nationals tickets and you get busy at work and your day to day life and you forget about it. Well, fear not, as tickets are actually cheaper closer to first pitch. So take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N NHL for twenty dollars. 
$50 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all the shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you the can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome back into this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So in yesterday's episode, I went over Jacob Chikrin's profile. In this episode, I will expound a little bit more on what kind of player he is and what how, what his feelings were about joining the Capitals. A big marquee name It bears repeating and a big move for the Capitals. The Capitals have made a significant move in free agency by acquiring defenseman Jacob Chikrin with the Ottawa Senators in exchange for Chikrin. The Capitals sent Jensen and a 2025 third round pick to Ottawa. Uh, You can't ask for anything more than that. Uh, You really can't. That was a great trade for the Capitals. Chikrin is known for his offensive skills, strong skating ability, and versatility as a defenseman. His addition is expected to strengthen Washington's defensive lineup and provide a boost to the team's offensive capabilities. With nearly 500 games of NHL experience, Chikrin's season presence is anticipated to have a positive impact on the Capitals' performance. The acquisition of Chikrin addresses the team's need for additional offensive contribution from the blue line, and his skill set and experience are likely to be a valuable asset for the Capitals in the upcoming seasons. I do believe that's the case. Uh, We don't know how these players are going to play until they lace up the skates and and hit the ice for the respective teams. But as I record this right now, I think it was a good move. Chikrin's family has a rich hockey background with its father, Jeff Chikrin, and uncle Luke Richardson, both having a notable career as an NHL defenseman. Jacob Chikrin's own career began when he was selected by the Arizona Coyotes in the first round of the 2016 NHL draft. Since then, he has demonstrated his talent and potential as a strong defenseman in the league. And as I record this, where does Chikrin slot in? Where does he slot in? If you're asking me right now, I say on the top pairing with John Carlson. Again, this is early, but I think that that could very well be the case. Overall, Washington's addition of Chikrin is expected to have a positive impact and further strengthen its defensive lineup while addressing the team's offensive needs. And uh, in the video where he met the press, the Capitals press, they asked him about his thoughts about being a player, what it meant for joining the Capitals. He said, living in the present, Jacob Chikrin expressed his desire to live in the present and not worry about the future, especially after experiencing a trading situation and uncertainties with his team, the Ottawa Senators. He didn't want to carry this into the summer, worrying about where am I going to be playing in the fall? He made the right decision. Talking about his transition to the Capitals, Chikrin was initially shocked to learn about his trade to the Caps, but became increasingly excited as he learned about the team's aggressive offseason moves and its determination to contend. Again, this is a guy that played with the Coyotes. This is a guy that's played with Ottawa. Both those teams weren't really contenders, I hate to tell you. So definitely coming to the Capitals was an upgrade. Talking about his on-ice contributions, the defenseman aims to bring his two-way skills and offensive instincts to the Capitals. He is looking forward to capitalizing on scoring chances and working with star players like Ovechkin to improve the team's offensive performance. Uh, Working in tandem with the offense, that is always what's important. Talking about off-ice dynamics, Chikrin is looking forward to joining a team with a strong locker room culture and is excited about familiar faces within the organization, including the childhood friend Blake Duhame and the other acquisitions from his time in Arizona. I think it was a solid move, all things 
considered for the Capitals. Uh, excuse me, Duhame, I was reading that too quickly there. Um, so I think that um, when you have familiarity with a team, that is always important. And I think it's going to be a flawless transition for the Capitals. I think that the Capitals needed to address the blue line. I also think that they have viable options down in Hershey. But those options that are in Hershey, we know, are good. Are they NHL ready? That is the question. You take a look at Iario. You take a look at Dylan McElrath, who I think could find a spot on the team. You take a look at Chase Prisky, those kind of players. Uh, I think that in time, they'll be ready. I think that Vinny Iorio potentially could. I know that Alex Alexiev uh, finally got the uh, raids that he was looking for, and I think that he figures to be in the lineup on opening night. So uh, there are players that are making their way up historically. Martin Faravari here recently as well, uh, plus the addition of Rasmus Sandin. I think the Capitals' blue line is looking pretty good. Uh, improved over last season, suffice to say, and that's what's important, is about making steps forward and making your team as good as it possibly can be. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see how this team shakes out in the fall, how this uh, team, these new players, how cohesive is it with the likes of Ovechkin and Tom Wilson and John Carlson, the players that have been here for a long time. Um, there's going to be high expectations uh, set about it. And I think that the Capitals have two really strong leaders in the locker room and Alex Ovechkin and Tom Wilson. And uh, they are going to be the ones that kind of lay out the template of how the team functions like if you're playing in Washington that's good but this is how we play hockey here so you know if in the event that some of these players do come in with negative baggage I think that uh, certain players will make it quite apparent of how things go in Washington uh, but I am pleasantly surprised about the additions made to this team I think that Chikrin and Roy definitely solidify the blue line and I think the Capitals are in a good position Roy getting a six-year deal that was a vote of confidence um, and I think that that was a, a good move. You take a look at Jensen. Jensen showed flashes of greatness, glimpses of greatness. Uh, but I do think that Roy and Chikrin are definitely an upgrade. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this all gels uh, in the fall. All right. So coming up here after the break, we will talk about the draft. Uh, what is this team going to look like? Uh, in coming years? That's always important. And I have Keith Leonard of Rotowire joining me. And I'll talk to him straight ahead. On today's episode of Locked on Capitals, we are joined by Keith Leonard of Rotowire. Keith, welcome to the show. Thanks, Dan. Good to be back, back on your show. We were talking here in the pre-interview here that it's feast or famine covering this team. It's either a desert where there's little to no news or all of a sudden it's the draft. It's free agency. And this particular year, there was a ton to cover. What were your thoughts? Well, there it's been quite a few days uh, by virtue of the fact of the Stanley Cup finals finishing so late. Um, we had an even more compressed off season than normal. And uh, even factoring that in, there's just been a lot in the last few days. It's been a very, very interesting couple of days to, been a, to be a Caps fan. Um, I, mean, I guess we'll just start chronologically with the draft. Uh, they came away with eight picks, um, which is their largest haul in, in quite a while. And uh, the players they took at the top of the draft, I think, have the potential to be really strong foundation players. And this is a carryover from what they did a year ago when they took Ryan Leonard, Ryan Leonard and Andrew Crystal. Um, the, going in the first round at 17th overall, uh, Tarek Parashek. This is an intriguing player. He rose up fast uh, through the course of the season. I sort of came out of nowhere in his first season with uh, Prince George in the WHL, put up 105 points, and he only turned 18 about a month ago, um, which is pretty uh, pretty stunning production for a kid that young who kind of just stepped into his the league his in his rookie season. Um, so there, there's a lot to like there. There's a lot of offensive production, um, even if he's got a pretty short resume in a major junior league. Um, He's, he does a lot of things well. He doesn't have any particular elite standout tools, although he does have a really high hockey IQ, um, which is something that they, the Capitals seem to want to covet with players they take early. Um, he's, he does a lot of things pretty well. And he was used in all situations in Prince George. He distributes the puck well. He skates it out of trouble. He 
finds open ice for to put it in the back of the net. He looks a lot to me like kind of a younger, like Seth Jarvis for the Carolina Hurricanes. Um, has a pretty similar profile, drafted in a similar spot range. So um, th- there's a lot to like here if you're the Capitals. Now, the only knock on him, th- th- there are a couple of small knocks on him, really. Um, one is, as I said, he doesn't have much of a resume in, in the major junior leagues. He was playing prep school hockey the year before. I think if he had had a longer track record, he probably would have gone a little higher. Um, and also his his de- work in his defensive zone needs to be refined, which is not uncommon for a player that age. There are some concerns about his skating. It's worth noting that the Capitals began their rookie development camp today, and day one was all skating drills. And it's worth noting from notes posted by Sammy Silber of the Hockey News that uh, Paris check looked pretty good. So I, he's young, he's a little raw, He needs to put some meat on his bones. He's generously listed around 170 pounds. Um, So he he still needs to continue to grow physically as well as refine aspects of his game. But the Capitals are going to be patient with him. There's no need to rush him. Um, And so I I think if everything pans out well, they've got a real gem here in in Parashek in the first round. And it's and you mentioned his size, and that was something that I had noticed when I was watching it as well. If you take a look at even Celebrini, he is a smaller guy as well. So I think that even at a young age, they adhere to that strict diet of chicken and broccoli and a lot of exercise. <laughs> like years ago, it seemed like you know you take a look at Yager, or those kind of players, they were just big out of the gate. But a lot of these younger guys uh, definitely have to put some meat on their bone. That was true with McMichael and Lop here that they had to put on some weight because they were getting pushed off the puck. But it was exciting talking about Tarek Parasek. He is described as an offensive powerhouse with impressive ability to find the back of the net. Uh, His defensive skills, his defensive game is mentioned as needing work on positioning, consistency in his own play. Uh, His skating skills, his skating ability is identified as an area that could use improvement particularly his stride. That is a common theme as well. That is one of the knocks that I've heard on Andrew Kristol as well. Um, Tarek Parasik in the NHL draft, he has moved up the NHL mock draft. There was a high hopes for him. Obviously, we know that the Capitals selected him at 17, but all things considered, it is what it is. You know, you take a look at Ryan Leonard last year, of course, drafted much higher. And I think that in your mind, you're like, that's who they drafted? That's it? We got Ryan Leonard last year, and this is what we get? Well, we were much further down the draft. Uh, but next year, talking about the Capitals weren't done there. Uh, Cole Hudson was the next one that, that they selected. The Capitals have taken defensemen to open the second round. Washington moved up to the second round in order to draft Hudson, trading fourth line forward back Malenstein. Can be honest, that one hurt a little bit. I know that they filled those gaps, but still a tough move. I was definitely a fan of Malenstein Hudson, who was committed to Boston University, shined with 51 points in 51 games with the U.S. national development team and had 12 points in 19 US at USHL games. Talk to me about your thoughts on Hudson and where he fits into the Capitals' master plans. Well, continuing with the trend of players who need to put meat on their bones, uh, Cole Hudson is uh, hes sort of a kind of a not controversial is not the right word, but there's a wide spectrum of opinion about him. What people do not doubt at all are the offensive skills that he brings. He is an electric skater. He moves the puck extremely well. He makes crisp passes. He's got a very high hockey IQ. He distributes the puck well. He can work a power play. He can create offense off the rush. He has a lot to offer on the offensive side of the puck. Um, the areas where his game needs improvement are defensively. I mean, just as a, I, by virtue of being 5'10 and 165 pounds. And again, he had only turned 18 just a few days before the draft. So he's still got time to grow. But by if he doesn't pack on a lot of muscle – it's going to be difficult for him to handle the more the, the larger forwards, in, you know, in the NHL down low in front of the net. But, you know, he's got time to do that. Uh, his defensive consistency still needs a little bit of refinement, but he's going to a good place to figure that out. Uh, Boston University is an outstanding college hockey program. He will be very, very well coached 
while he's there. And the Capitals, I believe, have every intention of leaving him there for a while because they see a lot of upside in him. And I think that they're right to do so. I think if everything pans out well, this guy looks capable of handling an NHL power play if he can continue to grow and refine his game. And I think of, I mean, I, I'm not saying he's going to reach it, but he reminds me a bit of Adam Fox, who has done quite well for the New York Rangers over the years, despite also not being the largest defenseman. And you can compensate for not having hulking, a hulking frame by being smart and distributing the puck well and being able to skate it out of trouble. And Hudson has those abilities. And I'm in, really encouraged by the fact that, that people who watch the NHL draft and prospects more closely than I do say that Cole may be ahead of where his brother Lane is uh, when, when Lane was drafted. And Lane Hudson has had a very good early showing for the Montreal Canadiens at the end of last season and looks like he's going to be an effective NHL player. So I'm very pleased with the selection. Like you heard, I, I agree, the, the loss of Malenstein hurts. He was a very effective role player. But you have to give Brian McClellan credit. Anytime you can flip a fourth-line player for a guy who could potentially anchor your top power play unit for years to come, it's, it's hard to quibble with the asset management, even if we you know, bemoan the loss of, of a really good role player like Beck Malenstein. But I think Cole Hudson was absolutely worth uh, the roll of the dice. Uh, at 43. I think that's a very good use of that pick. And it's something I think that just presented themselves where they were really into that player and wanted to obtain him. So a good move on Ross Mahoney and his crew, uh, always uh, top-notch selections. We're talking with Keith Leonard of Rotowire in this episode, talking the draft uh, in this segment here. Next, let's talk about Leon Moogley. A 17-year-old defenseman has demonstrated his defensive prowess in the National League, the top Swiss ice hockey league, with exceptional skating abilities, strong positional awareness, and a high hockey IQ. That is a common theme with a lot of these younger guys as well. Mugli excels in a shutdown role, making it difficult for opposing teams to penetrate the defensive zone. Um, and just taking a look at his raw talent, I think that he is another one that uh, at one point uh, will be a really great uh, pickup and a, a great part of the Capitals in the future. Talking about his playing style, smooth and agile footwork sets the foundation of his game. He excels at absorbing the attack. And using smooth pivots and backward strides to track opponents before launching himself at them to knock the puck away. So an aggressive style with his stick outstretched. According to Elite Prospects 2024 NHL Draft Guide, uh, beating him wide is close to impossible task once he's ready for the rush. So another intriguing name in Leon Moogley. Uh, what are your thoughts on Leon? Yeah, I, I like this pick. Um, I thought I thought there was a decent chance that Moogley would go late in the first round. I mean, he like um, Cole Hudson, he had sort of a, a wide range of, of potential outcomes. I had seen him in mock drafts go uh, in the sort of mid twenties. So to get him later in the second round, I think is pretty good value. I like this kind of defenseman. These Moogley very much fits the mold of a modern kind of shut down defenseman. Um, he's not, he has, I think, the frame to be, to, to handle larger forwards. He, he's about 175 pounds now, but he's an 18 year old. He should add more mass. You know, we have a theme here. Um, I think that combined with his instincts and his, his work ethic and his hockey IQ is gonna translate into him being a fairly effective defenseman at the NHL level once he gets seasoned. The Capitals have had some recent success finding defensemen in the Swiss League. Uh, before being traded, Jonas Siegenthaler looked like he was going to be uh, a top pairing, potential top pairing defenseman, shut down, stay at home type for the Capitals prior to that. I think there were some ice time issues and he didn't get to develop, you know, uh, here uh, the way that they would have liked him to. But the Capitals over the years have shown that they're, they're fine looking to sort of non-traditional development areas like the Swiss League. And the Swiss Leagues are getting better at developing players. Um, and I think everybody's trying to find the next Roman Yossi. 
And it's interesting that uh, Mowgli actually, in his most recent season in the Swiss League, broke Roman Yossi's record for scoring for defensemen under the age of 18. Now, I'm not trying to say that Leon Mowgli is the next Roman Yossi. If that was the consensus, he would have been drafted considerably higher than where he was. But he plays that kind of game. And I think he's got um, all the tools that you want in a mobile, rangy, shutdown defenseman. Maybe doesn't play with a ton of snarl, but plays a very efficient, clean game from the back end. And the Capitals seem to be interested in finding players like this, and they seem to want to find them in the second round. They've done it in recent drafts pretty regularly. Uh, drafted Ryan Chesley in the second round two years ago, Vincent Iorio the year before that. And I think Mugli continues another trend uh, in finding this type of defenseman. And so, like Hudson, I think he's going to get plenty of time uh, to, to, to grow his game. I think he'll remain overseas probably for at least another year or two. He should be, I, I would imagine he would reprise his role as a member of the Swiss team when the World Junior Championships gather in December. So Capitals fans will get a chance to see him then uh, again. But uh, I again, a good pick. And I think there's plenty of upside and plenty to like if you're if you're the Capitals. Uh, listen, Keith Leonard, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked on Capitals. Why don't you tell everyone where we can find your work? Uh, you can find me at rotowire.com. We've got uh, award-winning award -winning fantasy coverage for all your favorite sports. Uh, if you need some help for your fantasy baseball team, we've got you covered. We've got great stuff coming for uh, fantasy football, fantasy basketball, fantasy hockey coming up this fall. Um, and we're, we're there for whatever you need at rotowire.com. Thank you for joining me. And I want to thank all of you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, your only daily year-round podcast covering the Washington Capitals. And I want to thank all of you that listen on the audio side and watch this on YouTube. You are what makes this show successful. When you're done here, head on over to Locked On's 24-7 streaming channel available on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app and on YouTube. All right, once again, I want to thank you for joining me on this edition of Locked On Capitals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Dan Holmey, and I'll talk to you again next time.